Hi, I'm Mike, and welcome back. And if this is your first time here, be sure to subscribe and follow along as we explore the ranch life and escape the ordinary. Today, we're down here in summer pasture, where we're gonna be talking about summer pasture maintenance and everything that that includes. Also, we have a sidekick with us today. This is Bean, and she's gonna be helping us out. Stick around, it's all coming up today on our Wyoming Life. <laughs> Today's video brought to you by FBN Farmers Business Network. Go ahead and check them out for yourself. We're gonna be talking about some FBN products today, but really FBN is there to help the farmer and the rancher with huge discounts. In fact, you can use the code OWL25 at checkout to get a $25 discount on qualifying orders <laughs> right on the FBN website, OWL25 at checkout. Alrighty guys, uh, as you may know, my wife and I weren't raised here on the ranch. We were actually uh, we worked in the corporate world for, for a lot of years, and so it makes things a little bit interesting when you do come to the ranch and you end up having to work with animals, because in the corporate world, you're used to being able to um, control everything, dictate everything, quantify everything, keep everything, records and logs and everything else that you can. And once you start dealing with animals, you figure out that it's a little bit harder to do that. And one of the hardest places to manage on the ranch is summer pasture, and you really think it would be the easiest, but it's not. Bean decided to jump back into the gator and we are getting mobbed by cows. So I'm gonna get in with her. And we have to get away from these guys just a little bit to be able to do what we have to do. Done. And you ready to go? This cow is chewing on my arm, literally. Stop it. Ick. This watch costs more than you. Probably not, but you know. <laughs> You're so good. All right, we're gonna get away from these cows. Not because I don't like them, but man, they are mobbing us and we have things to get out of the back of the gator and talk about. We're not gonna be able to do it uh, with cows right up our keister. So we're gonna try to get away from them. They're gonna try to follow us. Well, at least the most energetic one out of the group will try to follow us. All right, uh, we are, if we stop, they're gonna come back and bother us. So we're gonna actually get on the other side of a fence here. So if they do come up, they're not gonna be able to get right up in our business. We have the back of the gator is full of stuff that we're gonna be using today as we get a, lot, a chance to take a look at summer pasture and, uh, and start some maintenance that needs to be done head down here. Now we usually come down about once a week and hit the maintenance route. Uh, every day we're down here with the cows, probably multiple times throughout the day, just making sure that everything's okay. But about once a week I have to come down and bring a bunch of stuff with me and anticipate finding problems. One of the great things about the ranch is if you go looking for problems, you're gonna find them. There's no doubt. Bean, do you want to get out again? A lot safer here, right? So we probably have a little while before these cows figure out what we're doing and where we're at. Um, when you go out looking for problems, which is basically what summer pa pasture maintenance is, uh, you have to bring along certain tools with you to make sure that you're able to uh, fix any problem that you find. And today what I'm really looking for is fence problems, but also I have some stuff here in the back that I'm going to put out for these cows so that, um, first of all, it distracts them a little bit and they'll leave me alone while I'm out trying to fix fence. Uh, but also, uh, it's, it's good for them and good for their nutrition. Uh, the first thing I'm going to show you here, these are 20% all natural tubs so these are for beef cattle on pasture or roughage rations and what that basically means is that they are getting hay as part of their ration um, it is <laughs> Bean just got chased by that calf over there it's kind of melted uh, it is hot out here today so just being in the Sun causes it to melt a little bit you can see that it's kind of mushy and gooey um, so we have to get this out of the back of the gator first though I thought just to distract the cows first uh, while I'm getting these 250 pound lick tubs out I would actually put out some cake for them and we're gonna talk about cake for just a minute as well so the cows are working their way up this way I don't know where bean went 
she might have jumped back. Did she jump back in the gator? No, she's just sitting there on the other side of the gator. Waiting patiently in the shade. So, uh, we have what we call cow cake. It's actually called cake because it's a it's a byproduct of like uh, cottonseed oil or sun sunflower oil. Uh, when they press the seeds, the oil comes out. What's left over is actually called cake, and that's why we call it cake. Uh, depends where you are in the country. It could be called range cubes or a number of different things, but uh, this is uh, what we give the cows as a nutritional supplement, and I just tore the tag in half so there's no nutritional information on there for me to read. Let me grab the other half of this. Uh, this is 20% rangeland cake. Um, it is called 20% because it's 20% crude protein. That's what the cows need at this point. It's also got fat and fiber and calcium and uh, phosphorus and salt and all kinds of other good stuff. So when we start putting out mineral, which is in the lick tubs, and we call this mineral, um, and we do the cake and we do all and we do salt blocks and we do mineral blocks. Basically, we're just hedging our bets. We want the cows to be able to get all the nutrition that they need. And a lot of that is free access. The lick tubs and like salt blocks, that kind of stuff, those are called free access. Whereas the cake is something that we actually have to feed them. So we've got a portion of the herd here. Uh, we're going to relocate really quick and probably head back down towards the main herd. We've got about 80 animals down here today, not including bean. Including bean, we have 81. And we have to get uh, about two pounds of cake per animal. Now, we do have some calves down here, so I actually brought down 150 pounds with me today, and uh, that's what we will be feeding. Now you may notice a little bit of audio difference in today's video and that's because my wireless microphone actually decided to stop working today which is just ironic. So uh, we are just rolling with our onboard microphone. Usually I use a GoPro. This is a GoPro 9 that I'm filming on. I get asked that all the time. What are you filming with? This is a GoPro 9. I don't have the GoPro 10 or 11 or whatever it is. I find all the uh, uh, each, each upgrade really doesn't have a whole lot that's new. Well, it's, there's nothing new enough that's worth another $400 or whatever they cost. So uh, this one works just fine. We're back down here to the cows. We're going to get this cake out for these guys to distract them. And then we're actually going to kind of wander down here just a little bit and kick out the, uh, the lick tubs as well. Some of these cows following us around. to get mobbed again. It doesn't take them long to move a couple hundred yards. So really quick, this is cake. It is uh, that uh, cotton seed or, or sunflower seed or whatever it is that they're pressing oil out of. Uh, once they get done with the material, it's called cake. They put it through an extruder and there it is. Okay, I hear ya. Pushy. Some cows like cake, some just like anything else. They, they, but some cows love cake, and some cows love lick barrels, and some cows love just lick blocks. So, like I said, we're hedging our bets out here, uh, making sure that they're getting what they need. But most of the cows, as you can see, aside from a few of the calves, hey kiddos. Are really getting into the cake. By the way, this is Brutus right here behind me. Hey, Brutus. He was one. He was our bottle calf. He was the one that uh, mom had a uh, uterine prolapse, and 
He's not as friendly now as he used to be, but he's still pretty close to us. We also have uh, Bella and Allie over there, or other bottle calf right over there. Here behind me, this is number two, and number two loves cake. She's a huge fan of cake. Um, she's a very friendly cow. I don't know why she likes it so much. I mean, I don't know. It's not, not really that good. It's very dry. It's salty though. Maybe it needs milk. I don't know. One of the things that I like to do when I'm down here on summer pasture is get into the cows a little bit. And this is this could be considered part of the maintenance uh, that needs to be done because cows need somebody to check on them occasionally. Now, one of the big things I'm looking for is flies. And you can see on this cow, like there's quite a few flies uh, that are getting up and on her. And so that tells me that we're probably gonna have to come down here and do a little bit of fly control. Another cow that happens to be here behind us is actually number 130, who was the cow that came into the chute for us and we actually took care of her abscess. So I do want to try to get a look at that and see how she's doing. Um, from here, I can see that it is completely closed up, pretty well healed. <coughs> But you can also tell she's not a huge fan of me. She's really keeping an eye on me and making sure that I'm not, uh, you know, gonna stick anything in her face. In fact, she'll just walk away. Okay, so while these guys are busy with their cake, and if somebody asks where Bambi is, she's actually uh, late for the party. She's walking way back there. I don't know what she was off doing, probably following her nose for food and got away from the herd but she is on her way in for cake um, what we're gonna do is actually drive a little bit and get out of here let these guys enjoy their cake and uh, we are gonna head down and get rid of these lick barrels always so excited to see us Bean do you want to get out you want to get out come on come on Bean. and there's Bambi okay so we're gonna hook Bambi up with one of these lick barrels right here where we stand and hopefully not make too much of a mess. We also have some other cows coming over to see what we're doing. How are you? You guys are all the friendly ones. Okay, we're gonna get this barrel out of here now. Like I said, I'm probably gonna make a mess because it is a little gushy. Oh, well, that wasn't as bad. All right, there's one. We're gonna drive a little ways away and get rid of another one here. right now uh, in summer pasture is actually one of the hay fields that we cut uh, earlier this summer. So this was an 80 acre hay field. It's already been cut. There's not a whole lot of grass here for the cows to eat. And that means that I can put my lick barrels out here and not have to worry about uh, disturbing any actual grass. I found that it's actually better to put lick barrels somewhere where they've already grazed or something like that because they are going to gather around them <coughs> they're going to kill uh, a lot of the grass around it so this way in this hay field it's got a lot of time to recover here we go get right to it With this many cows down here, these lick barrels will probably only last a couple weeks, but we actually buy them in bulk from FBN. So uh, we're able to save a ton of money with FBN and the lick barrels as well. Um, if, you, if you buy lick barrels, check out FBN's prices because I think uh, we get a ton of lick barrels for about half the price that we could uh, even 
from our local feed store. Uh, so it's 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 a great place to save money uh, on FBN uh, with these lick barrels. Now we actually have to do some real work and some real maintenance here, and that includes getting out and taking a look at fences because in the past I can tell you that it was more of a you check fence when you move cows into a pasture and Boy, that was pretty much it. They could spend, you know, three or four months in that pasture. You would never go down and check the fence again. But because we've kind of switched over to this, uh, rather than putting out fires, we're actually trying to prevent fires. I've gotten a little bit more proactive as far as it comes to uh, defensing and making sure that fences are okay. So I will come down uh, about once a week and I will check a stretch of fence. Um, I'm not going to check the whole. Uh, 2300 acres or whatever this is down here i'm not going to check the whole thing in fact uh, we have about 27 this was at last count it's probably went up by now but we've got 27 miles of fence on the ranch and if you imagine checking uh even a quarter of that uh it takes quite a while so what i like to do is actually come out take a look at one stretch of fence every week just to make sure that that stretch of fence is the best that it can be Now they, good, they say good fences make for good neighbors, and actually we do have pretty good neighbors. Uh, everybody is pretty good about checking the fence. Um, if I'm not checking it, I mean, there's been times that I've been checking fence and I'll run into the neighbor checking the fence at the exact same time. We're like, well, both of us don't need to check it. Uh, but it is nice to have a neighbor who will go out and check fence. Now a lot of, a lot of people don't have that, uh, that luxury, so you do have to check it by yourself. And honestly, if you, if you do have a neighbor that checks fence quite often, and it can cause you to get a little bit lackadaisical and you're not gonna actually go out and check it yourself. And that's when trouble could happen. Your neighbor might be on vacation or something. You never know what's going on. So it is helpful to get out and check your fences yourself. Um, we've got, like I said, we've got a lot of fence. Uh, we actually have, we have a lot of neighbors too. So being able to uh, uh, take care of as much as it's possible for ourselves makes sense. Uh, there's a lot of money inside these fences and that money is very important to the operation of the ranch. And if something happened, uh, that can be detrimental all the way around. All right, so here is a problem. This is one of the uh, most common problems that we have with fence on the ranch. And that's with the fence getting twisted. And this is actually because of antelope. Um, antelope don't jump fences. They tend to go through fences. Uh, they'll get twisted up. They'll twist up the fence themselves. It's pretty easy to fix, obviously. All I have to do is get the fence back to where it's supposed to be. But the problem that it can cause is actually that a calf can just shoot right through there. That's a big space. And if a calf comes over here, is eating grass on that side, keeps taking a step forward, a step forward, a step forward, or something comes up and gooses them, they might just go right through the fence. So we just wanna make sure that when we see something like this, we just get it twisted and taken care of. And usually these twists are caused by loose fence. Antelope going through them will loosen the fence, to, you know, dramatically. And these two strands here are pretty loose. This one's nice and tight, but these two here in the middle are very loose. So that's why I bring my tool kit with me. Uh, we have a specific box and I, I tend to use these kind of boxes as much as possible. Um, these things are, allow me to pack together the stuff that I need and just keep it in here. And then when I need to go fencing, I just grab the fencing box. And in the box, I've got a lot of different stuff going on. Um, I've got my fence stretcher, in case we actually have a broken wire. Um, I can bring ends back together. I've got a gripple tool. This is a gripple uh, torsioner. And I have gripples, which I can use on barbed wire fence to bring stuff back together. Um, I've got T-post clips, if I can get one loose. These are the little clips that hold the T-posts or the wire to the T-posts. Um, I've got a hammer, I've got staples, I've got pliers and all kinds. I've got extra wire just in case I really do need to patch something up really quick. I don't bring a bunch of barbed wire with me, um, but if I do need to patch something up, I can get a temporary wire on it, throw a flag on it, and then come down, back down and work on it really quick. Um, for this, uh, what we're going to do is we're actually going to use something called Jake's wire tighteners. And this is a really quick way to tighten up a loose wire like this. Now I could cut a section out of it, bring it together, wire it back together and all that kind of stuff. But Jake's wire tighteners do tend to do the job uh, pretty quickly. Um, these things you can buy online. Uh, I think you can get them on Amazon. I'm not exactly sure. But um, you can just, well, here I'll show you. 
Jake's wire tighteners look like this. They're just a bent piece of metal that you place over the barbed wire. And they, uh, you actually need this tightening tool. This is the, the tightening tool for them. So you're gonna take your bracket, or whatever you wanna call it, and you put it on your, your tool like that. And then you come over to your wire and you place this over the wire like that. Pretty simple. Way easier to do than it is to film. Once you've got this over the wire where you want it, all you have to do is give it a little twist. And what this does is just twists around the tool and you can twist it up and clamp it back down. And now that wire is nice and tight. I'm gonna do the same thing to the other wire. And we're done. Now the next time an antelope goes through here, this wire is gonna be a lot tighter and a lot harder to get through. Bean, you're on the wrong side of the fence. Come on, let's go. Come on, Bean, come underneath. And I found another cause for this twisted fence and that is missing T-clips. Uh, these are the clips that hold the, T, the wire to the T-post. Uh, we're missing them in two spots here. So we're just gonna go ahead and get those replaced. This is super simple as well. All you have to do is just place the T-clip around the wire. I usually bring a straight screwdriver to be able to help me with this. Although they do make tools. Little twist and we're all done. And now we're back up and running. And of course we have Bean to supervise. So a lot of our fence problems we can blame on the antelope. Uh, we have, I think I talked about in the last video, more antelope than people, but um, antelope hunting season starts here any day now. It's actually on the 1st of October. So that will be a welcome relief. We have a problem here. If the cows find this, we're in trouble. You wanna come out, Bean? So here's exactly why we come and check fence. This gate is wide open. Uh, the cows, all my entire herd could have wandered over there and been visiting the neighbors and who knows what gates are open from there on and then we just keep on moving down those lines. So this is a wire gate. Uh, it is open and uh, hopefully we can get it closed. So usually there's a strap like this that's used to keep these things closed, but some of them are really, really tight. Um, so what I'm gonna do is actually use our fence stretcher to bring this back together. Maybe. We're almost there. Some people make these things so tight. That'll do it. All right, we've got a gate again. Now I don't have to worry about the cows being over there. 
because the grass is always greener somewhere else. Okay. Another fun part about this whole thing is you might just get stuck, which I just, uh, I think I did, but we're gonna try to get out of here. I found a nice little ravine to get stuck into. Hmm. Well, let's see what happens. like that. Well, that's what I drove into. Bad thing about taller grass, you can't see that stuff. Bean, let's go. I, I swear I'm not going to get stuck again. You don't want to get in. She doesn't trust me now. Bean, can you get in? Let's go for a ride. Come on, get in the gator. Get in there. Bean, come on, you gotta go with me. Come on, get in. Bean. She does not want to come with me. Coco Bean, come on. Come on, get in here. Come on, trust me just a little bit. I think she got bounced around a little bit. All right, take a little bit uh, wider path around this hole here. One trick that I found with driving across some of these fields is uh, you can see where the cows have walked. So just follow their paths. They're a lot smarter than I am. All right, so keep cruising along here and see if we come into any more problems. Uh, we're checking about a mile of fence here along the, uh, uh, this will be the north side of Summer Pasture. still checking fence uh, one thing that I do take a look at also when I'm down here on summer pasture and a portion of summer pasture maintenance is looking to see how much grass is left down here now there's a lot of acres and only what did I say 80 cows or something like that so there's there's a lot of grass down here for them to eat but one of the most interesting things probably one of the most important things is I want them to eat it efficiently and cows can be lazy, right? So there's water, they're gonna stick pretty close to the water. They're gonna spiral out from a water tank when they start eating and work their way farther and farther away from it. Uh, at some point, they're not gonna go far enough away from the water. So that's when you have to change water sources and use, you shut off one water tank or one well or whatever you do, and then you move them uh, and, and get them on another water well. You shut off one, you turn on another, and that actually forces them to graze the fields more efficiently. And I, I really can't have to say, like down here on summer pasture, I wish we had more water sources. I mean, that's where you see us out in the water truck. We're filling up tanks. We're trying to move cows around. Luckily this year, we're not really worried about it as much because like I said, we have plenty of grass out here that the cows haven't even touched. And they're only gonna be down here until probably November. Uh, we'll bring everybody back for prank checking. Depending on the weather, we could bring them back down here. Uh, depending on what it looks like but it really does come down to water then as well because if it's frozen i can't come down here and break ice every two or three hours so 
definitely a, a big thing that's going to happen is they, they'll eat as much as they can down here, but eventually they'll just end up moving back home. And when they're back home, I don't so much care about this fence, which is another big thing about your neighbors. Your neighbors aren't going to care about fence that they don't have animals in either. So if there is no animal on the other side of the fence for you, you know that it's your responsibility. That brings us to the end of this fence line. And honestly, not that many problems. A few T-clips, the gate that was open, I'm really glad we caught that um, because I was down here, what, a month and a half ago, drove the entire fence line, had no problem. So who knows what happened with that gate, but I'm glad that it's closed because I didn't want to be chasing our entire herd halfway across the countryside. With the completion of that run of fence, it actually takes us up here to one of my most favorite places on the ranch. Uh, we call this little mound or whatever it is, we call it Jersey Ridge. It's actually, it was named by a friend of mine from New Jersey, uh, his name's Will. And this is an awesome place to come and hang out and just look at the ranch. It's also a good place for Bean to come up and chase some critters or whatever she's doing. So guys, thank you very much for coming along with me. Uh, like I said, pasture maintenance is a constant and ongoing thing uh, that's always happening here on the ranch. But for me, it is really kind of a time to relax a little bit too. You know, if I wasn't filming, I would have had music playing. We would have been bebopping across the field, checking fence. And sometimes it's easy to forget where you are and what you're doing. You're just, you get wrapped up into it. And next thing you know, you look at the clock and it's four hours later and you're still driving in circles and you're wondering if you have enough gas to get home. And you hopefully don't get stuck when you're not paying attention. So anyway, thank you very much for hanging out with me. I do appreciate it. Uh, lots of cool stuff still on the way, obviously. Uh, whereas we get ready to start moving cows back home. Uh, that'll be happening before too long. And keep an eye on your email. If you haven't signed up to our newsletter, head on over to our website, sign up for the newsletter. You can scroll down to the bottom. There's a little link down there to do it. We have beef coming back this weekend on the website. More steaks, more hamburger, more pork chops bacon, all kinds of stuff. Beef and pork will be restocked in just the next couple days. So keep an eye out on, on the newsletter. Make sure that you are know first when we have beef back in stock. You can get it ordered, like, delivered directly from the ranch to your door, and you can take home a piece of the ranch today. As for me, I'm going to go grab some lunch. It's 11.53, and I've got a few miles to drive to get back home, and Bean and I, I think, I think we've earned it. So thank you for hanging out with us. We'll see you next time right here on our Wyoming Life. Coco Bean, where are you going? You walking home? Come on, girl. Come on. Come on, Bean. Come on. Let's go. Bean, come on. Come on, Bean. Come on, Bean. Come on, Bean. Get in. Bean, get in the gator. Bean, get in the gator. Get in. Let's go. Come on. Get. She still doesn't want to ride with me. Thank you.